Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika, and with a less chat. Now, I've been away from the celebrity news and gossip for a little minute, but as I promised last night, um, I am going to start my content back up like I said I would, and today is a new day. We moving on. Now, I was driving over there on the Instagram streets earlier this morning, and I saw that TMZ had been talking about this case with Justice Smollett. And I just was like, well, wait a minute. You mean to tell me not now one of the little things dropped by my DMs over on Instagram and told me that the people said, just, why y'all ain't tell me people say Justin lied? Why y'all ain't tell me that the people said Justin had lied? Now, I y'all know I told you when I talked about it last that I was going to let justice prevail and let these uh, the Chicago Police Department in conjunction with the FBI give me the, the facts and, you know, the factuals, the actual factuals as to what has come out with this case. And I ain't going to lie, it don't look too good for Jussie. It don't look too good for Jussie. This story never did look good. So let's unpack a couple of things, shall we? Now... Round about January the 29th, in the wee hours, over in Chicago, doing probably one of the worst snow, cold storms that hit that area in some time. It was sub-zero degrees down in Chicago the night that Justin decided he wanted a damn sandwich. So... Just a feeling like I'm an American. I got freedoms. I can go down to the subway and get me old nasty piece of sandwich, okay? So he he went on down to the subway and somewhere in between him getting a sandwich and returning back to his place of uh, of residence, Jesse told us that two white men wearing Magna hats had assaulted him and re uh spoke on I guess they said some they gave racial slurs, homophobic slurs to him. And uh he ended up winding up taking himself to the hospital uh calling the police to report the assault. And when I first heard this, also he was supposed to have a noose around his neck and also a, a unidentified substance was allegedly uh poured upon him during this assault. And when I first heard this this story, family, I was like, well, wait a minute. Okay, okay. In the climate that we live in today, one would believe that that, that I, I could believe that would happen, especially considering the fact I live in the South. I, it's a very it's a very real and sad possibility something like that could happen, okay? So then we begin to hear about um, his lack of cooperation. Now, the people were saying that he was uncooperative, but the police department at that point was saying that he was cooperating fully. Speculation began to rise as to whether or not this man was actually assaulted by anybody. And then let's fast forward this thing on to uh, a week or two later. I heard something of two men who were identified as possibly the two men who had assaulted him. Now, I didn't understand why we made a point of the fact saying that they Nigerian men because they are uh, Nigerian descent. However, they are two uh, American. They they are Americans. They were born and raised in Chicago. They just happen to be of Nigerian descent. So I, I, I once I got past trying to figure out why did they have to specify the Nigerian. Then I thought, well, maybe they did that because Jesse said that they were originally two white men. So if these Nigerians didn't attack him, where he seen two white men is at? Then it was a report right about the time this all happened of a neighbor alleging that she had seen a white male around their apartment complex around the time that he was said to have been attacked. And that person seemed to have a what she described as a rope hanging from their pocket. So that kind of made just the story a little bit more viable. But then when the Nigerians came into the play, the Nigerians said, we ain't finna sit here and take no rap for this. This man hired us. 
to do this. We rehearsed this. And some kind of way, the Chicago Police Department must have believed them because they allowed them to be released without charge, pending a further investigation. So now here we are, y'all. This is what we. This is what it is. These these two men who, one of whom was allegedly an extra in the um, on Empire. He's one of the Nigerian brothers. These Nigerian brothers ain't saying that they taking no rap for nothing. They saying that they rehearsed this and that Jussie paid them. So now, where do we? What do we think? Now, not only is his story being called into question, people beginning to look at him sideways because the story didn't sound good, didn't sound believable completely from the beginning. And then his lack of cooperation and wanting to forfeit his phone was even more suspicious, suspicious and people didn't look upon, you know, wanting to uh, believe his story as, as hard as we first originally did. Then we hear today from TMZ that his role, some of the roles that he had coming up for the second half of the season, he won't be in. They have slashed his roles tremendously, meaning that the people over at Fox is feeling some kind of way. Now, it could be that because he's under this, you know, this negative light right now and speculations about his involvement or lack thereof is still very high, that the comp- they don't want to... Big places like that, companies and entities don't want to be associated with no stuff like that. They don't want no scandal and they don't want no shame. Okay, so they have slashed his uh his involvement in the second half of the season down tremendously, and I don't hear Taraji talking. I ain't heard Lucius Lyon talking. I ain't heard Hakeem Lyon talking. I ain't heard uh, Andre uh, lying. T- I ain't heard nobody talking now. I ain't heard uh, Lee Daniels speaking no more. So, what are we supposed to do? Well, the most important thing that we can all do is just simply wait on the completion of this investigation from the police department. And it, they have already said that they find that he actually reported a uh did a false police report criminal charges would be pursued against him but my question is why would he do this we can't say he was doing this because he he was trying to attention whore i mean how much more attention did he want he was on a hit tv show on fox that many of you still watch today he 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 does his musical thing. He's not broke. So how much fame did or uh, attention did he need? You know, it it's something to be said. It's something broken inside of you when you are already being celebrated, but it's just simply not enough. Now before I continue, let's let's just put this in stone right here. Everything I'm saying is my opinion based off of what the internet has been giving me. Nothing I say is written in stone, and you can respectfully agree to disagree down in the panty section. I don't mind. I'm just trying to understand how would a person who appears to be winning, why would you self-sabotage yourself like that? If, in fact, it is found that he did, in fact, uh, issue a uh, do a false police report and charges are brought against him. This is gonna be destroying his career. Who does that? And what is it that's going on inside his mind that would make him even if he did do this? Because this is all alleged. If he did in fact do this, why would he do this? What would be the end all? What what's the end game? And then for them to be actors, they was bad actors. I'm trying to understand the mindset behind all of this. Why would a person want to do something like this? You are winning. And I'm a firm believer when when it ain't broke, don't fix it. What was going on in his mind? And does he realize that this is a setback? 
for people in the LGBT community who may be assaulted because people don't like the fact of who they choose to love. We got hateful people like that in this world today. The world is full of very hateful, evil, vile, demonic people. We're full of, this world is full of people who judge, that they, they feel like they want to judge you simply by whatever it is that they don't find attractive about you. It could be your intellectual property or it can possibly be that they don't like how you look. But does they give you a right to touch someone in a harming way? Nope. And see, now I, my fear is because this is even being discussed and, and there there's so much speculation around the, you know, whether or not he actually was assaulted or did he set this up for himself. I don't like it because now when people are victimized by people who think that they can do it, uh, you know, people who feel like they can just say uh, anything to you because of your sexual preference or they can treat you any kind of way because of the color of your skin. Now people who scream out victim to these type of crimes are now going to be, you know, people going to look at them real side eye. They're going to be really digging. They're going to be quick to try to begin to do what we hate, which is called victim blaming. What was the end game for this? You just set your community back because now people are going to not once upon a time before you did this, folks didn't want to accept it, but some folks didn't. But people believed a person who said that they were attacked because of the fact that they're homosexual or they're black. Now you just set the whole community back because you could have possibly lied. And I again asked the question. What the hell was the end game? What did he want from this? What did he expect to come of this? You missed, and, and I ain't going to just say to me, I, want, I ain't 100% so that he lied, but the evidence is starting to pile up against him to make it look as if his, he lied. I ain't going to 100% throw him to the wolves because we all know the police department in Chicago has a seedy past. Remember, that's the same department that tried to cover up the Laquan McDonald killing. See, so I, I, I'm always, I always side out of the, uh, the police departments. I, I have to check. I trust you, but I'm gonna have to verify what you're saying because I don't know. You could be on the straighten up and doing your job because there are many, many men and women who work in law enforcement because they truly believe in keeping the public safe from harm but then we do have that other side of law enforcement who are some racist and some of them are overzealous in their practices as a law enforcement agent so i don't know what it is to believe in this that's why i don't want to throw the man away and just say he's lying because the police you can't sometimes trust them either but i tell you one thing this looks bad and at the end of the day, if it is proven that he did, in fact, lie and file a false police report, now you finna be further and you're going to be in more trouble than just the, the court of public opinion. You're going to have to go into the court of law because you're going to get charged. What was the end game? What was he thinking? Do we just, are we going to just overlook the fact that evidence is piling up against him that makes us believe that he may have possibly lied about the assault. I mean, what? how y'all handling it? I want to know what you guys think about this. Please let me know down below in the panic section your thoughts and opinions on Mr. Justice Smollett. And y'all remember, the death of your struggle will determine the height of your success. I will be back. The next video will be the have and have not. It may come out late, late, late tonight or first thing in the morning because I'm headed to work and I ain't going to be able to watch it um, at work if we be busy. If, we, if it's a fairly slow night, I can watch it on my own app, but I'm not certain if I'll be able to actually get a video done tonight because I am kind of tired still. Anyway, y'all. 
that's it. That's all. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Remember, if you talk, talk, if you come over here with that foolishness, you will be blocked and deleted. Y'all have a great remainder to your Tuesday, and I am out of this thing. Peace.